Urwaza, Gwen! Igrago, Gwen! Mago, Gwen! Tua! É para o Gwen, Edi! Lá no vídeo aqui, aqui! Fala do Gwen, já! This program will be friendly, no um, um, laughing issues, because um, Yorubas have been declaring war on Igbos for a very, very, very long time, and um, one tout calling himself a grandson of whatever, who came live on Radio Biafra International yesterday to insult our people, to deliver his stupid non-entity message directly to our people it was quite a, unfortunate i was a pity that um, i did not have the opportunity to talk to him yesterday only god knows the reason because i tried when i was invited but something or the other went wrong that didn't give me the opportunity a lot of Igbos try to caution or say something about Adeyins or whatever they call him, the grandson or whatever. Igbos, Igbos, Igbos. Let me tell you people, the most funniest thing about the Igbos is Igbos are falling behind in terms of history. Igbos are falling behind even though the, the oldest ones that are supposed to educate the young ones on the issues, things that are happening in Nigeria. Because they are living outside Nigeria. Today, our people are no longer active 
in the history of our um, 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 things going around us, you know. Um, I wasn't happy that nobody could be able to follow details by details to educate this guy called um, 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 whatever um, Adoyinka uh, grandson. Um, that thing touches me and uh, my heart was burning yesterday. Um, but I did not um, go astray because I have the opportunity to talk to the same Igbo people on this platform. Only God knows the reason why the thing happens yesterday. But before I will go ahead, I will still play this music because this is the book. This music that I'm playing today on the background is the music that the Igbos, the Abriba people, the Igbo indigenous used to declare war to anybody. I am declaring war on Eurobars today. Heavy war. Look, I'm going to leash out a lot of things that most of you may like, most of you may not like it. But German says it's mere shaisa a girl. I have to tell you the simple truth. Uh, I don't care whatever that comes out of it because I have noticed that our people uh, have been looking for safe heaven who will come and rescue them. Nobody will rescue you. Only you will rescue yourself, whether you like it or not. I am telling you today that the rescue, the freedom you are looking for, relies on you. Until you wake up to challenge your enemy, to challenge your problem, that problem will no longer wake up tomorrow to challenge you. But if you keep on lying under daycare, under blanket, thinking that somebody else, your pastor, your big brother, your friends, your neighbors, will alleviate your problem, you will keep on waking up and facing that problem every day by day. Let us dance a little bit about this music. I will still come back. But before I will put on the music, I will tell you people, Awolowo is a motherfucker criminal that's supposed to die in prison. Eurobas may call him God or whatever, but God never commits crime. But Awolowo is a criminal. I am coming back. Let's dance our music. I will be back. for waiting and uh, listening to this program on um, my people um, let me tell you people one thing um, this boy feeding his people and the entire Nigeria with fucking lies about Nigeria about the Igbos about the houses first of all Adeyinka grandson my first point to you is good morning please look at the time Nigeria to Europe. I am telling Adeyinka grandson, good morning. Most of you may be asking, why should I greet good morning by this time of the day? That's something that I learned from a great man called Odumegu. 
Ikemba Newe Ojuku. He keep on visiting those that trampled on top of the freedom of the Igbos. In the evening, late hour in the day, to give them a special greeting, good morning. That has a very powerful message. First of all, Adeyinka grandson, if you are listening to me, people should share this video. Let that motherfucker listen to this video. He said that their grandfathers chased away the white colonial masters. <laughs> let me repeat from, let me start from that place because he keep on you can manipulate the, the the level of every tribe through history but i'm not here to manipulate i am here to teach and lecture that motherfucker um the british came to nigeria they have been doing business with the eastern region people British government went into business agreement with the Eastern region. They did not colonize our people at the beginning. They went into agreement and our great grandfathers signed an agreement with the British authorizing British to do their business in our territory but they should not interfere in our political affairs. The British accepted that agreement. It was signed and agreed upon. Um, on and uh, later, the British went to the northern part of Nigeria. The Hausas revoked against the masters. They were fighting, but their fighting was limited. They could be able to subdue the northerners and went into agreement. And the northerners also give them the same destiny that they should not interfere and they should preserve the integrity and the culture of the northerners the yorubas i'm not any yoruba man that is here please challenge me if i'm lying i will put a number yorubas are the only tribe in that region that prepare themselves and hand themselves over to the colonial masters they submitted themselves that they will obey to every order that come from the colonial masters while the Igbos declare war on the colonial masters british fight the greatest war in Igbo land i'm not telling you the fucking truth, uh, lie i'm telling you the gospel truth i can remember the old man this man uh, died after 120 something years in my community they call him engineer james Wosu. He's a brass meat maker. He, he told me by that time, because I asked him a lot of history, he said that he is among those that were building weapons and everything they are using to battle the British. And there is something they call one way, 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 way. That is the automatic rifle of the British. When they start loading it, he called it, he said that our people has expressed such a thing as way, way, way. Good. That is bygone. And the slave trade that you are seeing in Africa today was engineered and orchestrated by the Yorubas. The Yorubas started slavery, slave trade with the British in Nigeria for the first time in history. They will not tell you this one. If this guy wants to manipulate my people to give lies, to lie about the Igbos, since the history of mankind, no other tribe on planet Earth a part of the colonial masters have subdued the Igbos. Nobody have ever subdued our people, not to co can conquer them, not to capture them, nor even to uh, trespass in our territory to kidnap or to do any bullshit. But our people are the ones that enters always the, the borders of our enemies, win the war, capture their people, bring them back and turn them to slaves. That is the pure history of Igbo land. Adeyinka grandson is telling you that their grandfathers chased away the colonial masters, that they received their independence before Nigeria. Why do this guy like to manipulate the truth? You know, we do talk about Biafra. This Biafra of a turn started from the riverside of Nigeria. 
Zeke that he keep on mentioning. Zeke, I, we do respect elders. I do respect elders. But Zeke did not protect the interests of the Igbo people. I keep on telling my people, wherever a child is being born and grew up and associate himself with the people, when he, whenever he entered into political level, he will try to protect the interests of those people. Zeke was not born in Igbo land. Zeke was born in northern part of Nigeria. And Zeke grew up in the north. And even though, if you keep on tracing the history of Zeke, Zeke is not even an Igbo man. Because the area where Zeke came in Igbo land are also part of the Yorubas. Yes, that is the true history. He is not a full son of the soil. Zeke can never be the king in the real Igbo land. Or anybody from their territory. Nor to be chairman of any Igbo organization on this planet earth but people have not figured out this why the people from this tribe have never ever become the chairman of any Igbo organization nor the kings or the king makers of the land of the in entire Igbo land when i mention Igbo i know where the Igbo land stand started and where it ends if you as zik brother ask your father this question so, Adeyinka trying to push Zeke. Zeke is your brother. Zeke is under Odudua. Zeke is also the same platform of Bini. All of them, all of you people are generated from the Bini kingdom. So, let me keep on um, 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 telling you people the, the, the real facts. And um, before the colonial masters left Nigeria, the first people that start agitation of freedom in Nigeria are the River Rhine people. When I mention River Rhine people, they are the Biafran people, the Igbo people, started agitating for freedom inside Nigeria. They disturbed Britain. To the extent, if you can remember the uh, Abba riot, women riot in Abba, the women went naked because of taxes. The problem that the, even the British colonial masters started taking the revenues they are getting from Yoruba land and the ones they are making from Hausa to cover the ones they, they, they could not even make from Igbo land. So that the Queen Elizabeth would not even uh, revoke against the, 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 the low outcome from Igbo land. To the extent the colonial masters brought in a woman, I have forgotten her name, she's a professor, a psychologist. To come and study the Igbo people and give them the best clue to penetrate the Igbo people. I bought the book that that woman wrote. It's also online. If you search for it, you will get this book. I read that book and this woman explained that when she came to Igbo land the first time, Igbos could not speak English. And the Hausa and Yoruba are calling Igbo people the backward people. Because they were distancing themselves from what they see, from white people. And these people are impressing them. But Igbos, they said that when this woman entered our territory to study the Igbo people, study their activities and how they do their things, that the Igbo people now push their children forward to that woman to, for their children to learn the language and understand what is her mission. She said for her greater surprise, before she will realize it, Igbo people, Asian people, old people in their villages have started implementing her system into her and she quit she tell the colonial masters i am sorry i am done here what i'm telling you is the history that most of the old people old good for nothing people that cannot tell this adoyinka grandson yesterday on air when they have the opportunity to talk to him because they don't know this history but i'm young I'm eager. I love to know about myself and about my people. So, the agitation that started from Eastern region pressed the British to the extent. I keep on telling you this thing. Adoyinka grandson is a more of fucking liar. The first people that got independent in Nigeria are the Eastern region. Eastern region got their independence in 1953. 
and this same Zeke, you know, our people keep on asking, what is the problem between we and the and the River Rhine people? I am going to tell you the fucking truth now. Because I keep on telling my people, go to my group. I call it Rivers and Igbos Reconciliation Forum. We must reconcile. We must sit down, talk our differences, and be able to heal the wound once and for all. But if you keep on walking up, up, upon anywhere, thinking that they will follow you along, you are a liar. You must sit down to discuss the wound, what happened. When they gave the Eastern Region people um, independent 1950, 1953, Zeke seated on it. Zeke seated on it and said that the, we, the Eastern people would never go. And they came to Enugu State and pushed away the River State man that was sitting on Enugu territory and declined the independence of Eastern Region. And Zeke organized the corrupt elite that keep on eating from the Hawasa Fulanese, the corrupt that Hawasa pregnanted their children, pregnanted their wife to deliver what we are facing today in this concussion called Nigeria. That same Zeke come there and organize his own group and bribe the kings and the kingdoms and ask them, who is this guy agitating in Enugu state that river state is not Igbo land? Imagine that this man should get out of Igbo land and go back to the River Rhine area. The highest humiliation that somebody can give to his junior brother. That is what Zeke feed this man in Enugu state. And the, the corrupt elites that Hawasa pregnanted their mother stand up and declare that River State are not Igbos. And they send these people away from our territory. Today we need them. Today we want them to follow us. Today we want them to be whatever we want. My people, it doesn't happen that way. They are our brothers. We offended them first. They did not agitate to get their River Rhine independent. They agitated to get Eastern Region independent. But the same Zeke that this Adoyinka grandson keep on pointing us at is the one that brought the problem division in our place. Who brought this Zeke to us is the same day full, this full and his houses. He was born there, he was grew up there, he does everything like a Korocha. All these people that have been developed born in northern Nigeria are a very big problem to Igbo land and the unity of our people. We should figure them, figure all of them out, be able to distance them from the inner politics of our people or else we will keep on crying as we are crying today. So, that one is bygone. Let me keep it aside. Now, Adoyinka is warning the Igbos in Lagos State. Adoyinka, you cannot peace up like a man. You will keep on pissing down like a woman. And you will keep on sitting down to pee like a woman until you die. You cannot do a more fucking damn shit in Lagos State. I challenge you. I declare war in that Lagos. Lagos never belongs to you. The Portuguese that came to Lagos meet Igbo people there first. The Abriba people was meet in Lagos Island. If you don't know it, know it today. And the Igbo people that are floating in Lagos State today, why are they floating there? Before, our capital was withdrawn withdraw from Calabar and was placed in Lagos State. And as normal, like Abuja today, everybody is immigrating to Abuja because it's the capital of the country. That drive our people to Lagos State from the capital city. And the, the, um, after the war, the Yorubas that concur with the Hausas to handcuff the Igbos because Hausa promised Yoruba that they would take the position of Igbo if they finish dealing with the Igbo people. That is why Awolo, after Zeke released him, and uh, he went to north, um, to their place, to the west, and tried to declare the war. And that was I invited him and gave him the best offer with MI5, MI6 of the Britain, telling them that they would take over the position of the Igbos, but they would not, they should not go and do what Ojuku said. Because of 
tribalistic hatred that is in Yorubas because of the, the, the God gift that Igbos has that the Yorubas doesn't have they join in coalition with Hausas to subdue the Igbos the suffering this guy daring to challenge the Igbos in terms of the prosperity of Lagos State do you think that those ruling, ruling, ruling Lagos doesn't know the benefit of the Igbos and they allow them to be there. I know the Yorubas are very tribalistic. If Yoruba, if Igbos are not useful for them, they would never, they would have, could have been able to chase Igbos out of that. Even Yorubas are more dangerous than the houses that you can see today. I have to tell you the simple truth, the gospel truth. I keep on telling you people, distance yourself from Yorubas. If you even go into alliance with Hausa, we may get what we want. We may not pull out of Nigeria, but we will get safe governance in Nigeria. I quote you the real facts. But Yorubas are the only people that have the largest interest of me and you. Because whatever you are doing is benefiting them. Tell me what Yorubas are, what are they facing in Nigeria to pull out of Nigeria? What will trigger a Yoruba man to declare the one? Nothing. How was us are feeding from the oil? Two of us, me and you, we never see oil before. That one, a national cake. Let me put it that way. But who is eating from the wealth, the blood that circulates in Nigeria? Who are benefiting from it is the Yorubas. A Dayinka grandson, you are sitting in, in your colonial master's territory. You love your country so much. You love your Duduwa so much. You stay in the territory of those that colonize you and make you what you are today. To stand and talk against the Igbos. You are a moral fucker. You are, a most, you are the most stupid person I have ever seen in Yoruba land. Because the highest importers are Igbos. The highest travelers are Igbos. The highest business in Nigeria is Igbos. Everything that runs in Lagos belongs to the Igbo people. Have you ever, ever went to Lagos on the 25th December, 26th, 27th? All the street of Lagos State is like dead zone. If you go there, it's like Syria of today. No human being moves around. Everything is dead. Hunger may kill you in Lagos. That Lagos that you are opening your mouth and talking blah, blah, blah. If you reach Nigeria and discuss this thing, your people will kill you. They will kill you because they will never allow this blood that is running their vein to disappear because they will go dry. You are talking about seaport. Do you know that Yorubas are the most foolish entity operating in Nigeria? You think that you want to harm the Igbos. Today you are crying because of the same Nigeria. Is it not the same Igbos that help your grandfathers to chase away the Fulanese when they conquered Yoruba land? Today, you are telling my people that it's the Yorubas that give Igbo the Igbo to speak. You have the opportunity to speak Igbo, you do not speak it. And you are speaking on that person's language. It's Yoruba from Nigeria. You are not from Nigeria. They brought you into Nigeria, you motherfucker. The owners of this Nigeria you are seeing are the Igbos and the Hausas. The Hausa kingdom and the Igbos. And the only other tribe is the Bini kingdom. Yorubas was brought in from Kotonu, Togo. Let me tell you the facts. Yoruba and Fulani are not Nigerians. Two of them are strangers inside the country. Go into British archive and read it. You will see it where you belong, you motherfucker. You dare to open your mouth to dictate, to talk about Igbos. Who is your father? Grandson of who? You are not ten to, in terms of Nigerian affairs, we know who is who and where you belong. And uh, you should come out and say sorry. I keep on hearing from you that Igbos, if they would not stop antagonizing the Yorubas and come into alliance with Yoruba, you are a motherfucker. Igbos coming into alliance with you. Instead of me, an Igbo man, will go into alliance with Yoruba, I will go into alliance with Awasa. I mean, how was I not Fulani? I will go into alliance with Benue. People, the real Hawasa Nigeria, the real people, not the Fulanis, not the Yorubas. Because before Nigeria, we have been in existence in that area. 
the Biafrans and the Hausas have been in the Zizat and Bini Kingdom are existing already in that territory before you came. So, standing without knowing your history, to do you know that your people are the, the tools that my people use as slaves? Haven't your forefathers told you that the Igbos do break? Even we kidnap your king and your queen. She served in my territory as slave, you motherfucker. I know where I came from. I want from Kuma, the three stone. I came from three fucking stone. Our people do say, Nkute Kurunelu, Ebupene Ebuala. That is my territory. If others doesn't know, I know where I came from. I will move for Umuduruji. Now, Kuma, no, Ihite, Obama, local government. I will miss you, Kubuye. The Makwe Bumen and the Mo, Equarota. We know they fear human being, we know they fear no human being. For you to stand to insult my people before me, yesterday I tried to teach you a lesson. I tried to talk to you, but Radio Biafra International played their game and did not allow me to talk to you. I know the history, I know the game. Even though you will bring Biafra, Biafra should remain where it is. Yorubas, it's better for devil, Satan, to give me Biafra than me to take Biafra from Yoruba man. Because all that we have been suffering in Nigeria today was orchestrated by Yorubas. When IBB was ruling Nigeria, a child of 20 years, 17 years in Igbo land, we are riding Mercedes. Obasanjo came to Igbo land, moved to Anambra, and saw what people are building, a state, and he greeted the governor. And the governor said, I am not the one building, it is my people developing. Obasanjo went back to Abuja and closed the entire seaport of Eastern Region and squeezed away all our business from Eastern Region. Till today, do you think that we are fools? Which people do you think that you are trying to play on their brain? I said every day when I speak, Biafrans are not against Hausas because we, Hausa and Bene Kingdom, are in existence before Nigeria came. And if my people don't know their history, they should keep on knocking on my door and I will lecture them. It is a passenger that used some Igbo elite that learned, that drafted the law that squeezed the entire eastern region the way it is today. But it is a pity that our politicians are not even interested on our people in this type of areas. But I am happy that I have this studio to talk to you, to talk sense into your brain. I declare today, Igbo, whoever that tried to work with Yorubas, how was I have pregnanted your mother? Never you, ever. Rather, seek for the face of the real Hawassas in Nigeria. They are the people who have been doing business since ages. If you go to Ghana, ask Ghanaians, old people, they will tell you that our people, Igbo people, use leg from our territory and go to Ghana to sell their um, Ezego, that is, uh, cowries and uh, other things. And the Hawassas, every they bring their things there. We have been doing business in Nigeria before they brought you into our territory, you motherfucker. Today, this one will come that Igbos have been suffering in the hands of Europe, uh, Nigeria. That uh, Fulanis have been killing us. This one and that one. It is because of your greediness, Yorubas. And because of that greediness and bitterness you have against Igbo man. That blind your eyes, you didn't know when Hawasa single-handedly dethrone you from the position you are claiming that you are holding. Today, they control your seaport. They control everything that runs in your territory. Even Igbos do have the guts to even complain when their shoe is penning them. But no Yoruba man would dare, dare complain. I can remember when Abacha came into power and the Igbos were plotting how to remove him into power. Even though our great senior brother from Awere, Iwanyamu, made a comment that we should allow Abacha to resign as a military man 
and we should use Senate to impeach him out of power. Abacha invited Iwanya to um, um, Asura and made him to understand I did not come into this power because of Igbo people. I came here because of the, the canker worm, the disease that keep on disturbing them for decades. That is the Yorubans. And by that time, he has every opportunity to deal with Obasanjo and his groups. And this guy, let me leave that one. This guy keep on mentioning the coup that Igbo orchestrated. <laughs> Do you know that the founder of coup, the first coup plotted in Nigeria for the first time, was Awolo. The first coup plotter. Have anybody keep on telling Oju could release Awolo? Oju could release Awolo? Why did Nigeria jail Awolo? Why did Nigeria jail Awolo for the first time? Because Awolowo was planning to overthrow Nigeria. Awolowo was building terrorists in his territory. This boy made me to understand Awolowo is their God. Does God commit crime? Does God plan something that will take the life of innocent people? You are a loser. Yorubas are losers and they will remain losers in Nigeria until their kingdom comes. Ibus, Ibus, we are the one holding ourselves back. We are gaining from Nigeria. That is why our people are spreading all over Nigeria, developing every territory. Even our development did not even end in Nigeria. We have taken it beyond Nigeria. It is God's gift. No human being can fight it or you cannot learn it. You must be an Igbo man to be an Igbo man. We are what we are. We are God's own people. And nothing can ever delete us from this planet. We did not come from Israel, nor from Egypt. We are in Igbo land. Before whatever that time. Even though before Jesus came, Igbos were in their territory. Igbos, listen, let me tell you. Igbos never worship Jesus. Igbos never worship Virgin Mary. Igbos never worship angels. Igbos contact. Have their contact direct to God itself. Chuku Okike Abiyama. The God of all gods. That is why when you trespass, it will strike you. It doesn't have mercy. It's better it doesn't go contrary. Even though Yoruba, let me tell you, when the Igbos helped you, let me just give you a small hint. And Yoruba, you should go and ask questions. I am not old, but I'm full with knowledge from God Almighty. Most of the things that I'm giving to you today, I did not read it in any place. Because it doesn't exist. But it comes to me directly. Any if the family is sitting on the untold story about the Igbos and Yorubas. I am the first person to reveal this secret. If you people start digging, you will find the truth. Only if this man that said that he will throw Igbos into lagoon, the person that challenged him is from that area. And he tried to mess up his palace got burnt. Any if had something that Igbos dropped in that area that keep on giving them security till tomorrow. Don't ask me how I come to know about that. Because the gods I'm worshipping, he said that he is what he is. He knows more than me and you. And when the message comes, I will deliver it to my people. My people, Osiram Gono, don't be afraid. Unu wendidi. Unu wendidi. Bokoto wuna ono. Bokoto wuna ono. Wendidi. Protect the history, the heritage of Igbo land. He said I should tell you people. Unu wendidi. Nye foro to Never you form alliance 
to any Yoruba, even though the handshake across the Niger, as from today, has been dissolved. It's not welcomed in Igbo land. Ogeji, ashe, arugo, arugo, dibani, alala. You will not use my people to get their political position in Nigeria. It will never work again. The freedom of Igbo people, Igbos, we want freedom. Freedom from what? The territory where we are today belongs to us. It is our property. But somebody have overthrown the kingdom and tried to rule over the kingdom. What we will do is to dethrone the power that keeps on ruling the kingdom of our land. That Nigeria belongs to Igbo, Bini Kingdom and Hausa. It doesn't belong to Fulani, nor to Yoruba. I am telling you the gospel truth. Udodrono, Yagazie, Yoruba have declared war and we are full with information. Don't think that Igbos are stupid, that they don't know the history of the land. There are people that the gods talk to. If you don't know it, know it today. I am living in outside Nigeria. I'm living in, in abroad, outside Nigeria. But there is no limitation between we and our ancestors. They are there and the gods of our forefathers are still in existence. Forget those that keep on telling you that what our grandfathers are worshipping are evil. We never worship evil, my people. We reject it. Evil people have never worshipped evil. If we worship evil, we will not be alive to see today. Igbos are warriors. And the gods of our land is what has got us to war. And we will conquer and conquer lands. And push back the enemy and seize their territory and their property. And take them into slavery. That is the gods of our forefathers. And those gods. Ieke. Ajala. All those gods are still in existence protecting our people. Those that are abiding, embracing the church that want to eradicate. Let me ask you something. You went into church, those so-called churches of today. They will brainwash you to go and up to uproot Oha and other trees that in existence in your family. Destroy the gods that is in existence in your family. When, those, when they destroy all those things and the gods start revoking, do that churches come back to put peace in that place? They will run and they will never come back again. Why? Because you are the most foolish idiot. You are tampering with something that your great grandfathers never know the history of it. Does those things hinder you from progress? No. Does those things block you not to get married? No. Listen, my people, and listen attentively. Let me give you one point now. If you are facing hardship in your family, facing setbacks, and there are gods in your family, you keep on visiting one church or the other, there is no solution. There is solution today, my people. Let me tell you the solution. One thing, if you do this thing and you did not see any light, come back to this place and challenge me and call me names. Let me remind you something. When the forefathers of our land do worship the ancient religion of our forefathers, they use the word chekwamu, chekwamwam, chekwomum, chekwomumum. Generations were included, and they will tell you, "I chekwani, akfobola, ani ge ni ge mwongoko." Maybe you don't know how to handle those gods today. That you are the son of the soil. You are from that family. That God can never ever trample on top of his people. He can never harm you. Unless you want to harm the gods. Go and buy Odo. O soji. O me mele na buya unzu. Am mwarere. Kuromu. Naya noko. Mporasa. Use it. Go to that place. And please the gods. Tell them what you want with our Jibo. That's all I demanded. I ask you to give them your blood. No. Give it to them.
tell them what you are facing and how you want it to be and come back in this place and give me your testimony thank you bye bye and god bless you that's all i have for you today